I am so excited to be working with the Pixelmon Realm server again to bring you 100 days on an island in Pixelmon. This is the perfect combination of my two favorite games. And my three goals, number one, to get a full team of Alolan Pokemon. Number two, catch one of the legendary bird Pokemon you can unlock on the server. And number three, build an Alolan style Poke School resort to learn about the wonderful world of Pokemon with my fans. Now sit back and watch as the journey continues. Day one, I logged onto the server, and since I'm going for an Alolan theme, I chose Litten as my starter. He looked ready for the adventure in front of us. When you join the server, you start out with a lot of good things, including these boots that make you run faster. I took some time to refamiliarize myself with the spawn and did slash vote to get some keys that I could use to win some free prizes. I got a lot of good things, including quick balls, ultra balls, and a shiny sunflora. With already two Pokemon on my team, I clicked on this RTP guy and was randomly teleported into the wild. And being dressed for the beach, I was really cold when I teleported into the snowy biome. <laughs> Luckily, if you use slash RTP, you can keep teleporting around the wild. Next, I ended up in a forest and got into my first Pokemon battle. This Illumise was a higher level than my Litten, but I was still able to defeat it. <laughs> what do you think is the creepiest Pokemon? <laughs> I would honestly have to go with Mr. Mime. I got into a battle with one and I realized a little too late that it was level 40. Luckily, Mr. Mime didn't obliterate my Pokemon and I was able to catch it with an Ultra Ball without having to do any damage. As the sun began to rise on day two, I sent up Mr. Mime. It was a terrifying enemy, but now it's a powerful ally. I then caught the Poochiana that was chilling nearby, as well as this Drillbird. I just wanted to make sure I had a full team as soon as possible, and I didn't care too much what Pokemon was on my team at first. I also came across an Execute, which is a fairly rare Pokemon on the server. Unfortunately, Litten couldn't control his fiery temper, and he defeated Execute. As the sun began to set on day two, I chopped down my very first tree, made a boat, and set sail for a perfect island to build my base on. Early day three, I found my first wild Alolan Pokemon and caught myself an Araquanid. What I really love about Pixamon is that you can actually ride a lot of the bigger Pokemon. This meant I really no longer needed a boat. I also thought I found my first other player on the server in the wild, but it just turned out to be an NPC. He was only level 24, and when he sent out his Kingdra, I thought that this would be an easy win. But then his Kingdra proceeded to defeat most of my Pokemon, and it did not look like Mr. Mime had any moves to do damage. With Mr. Mime and my Araquanid with just 2 HP left, I finally defeated this guy's Kingdra and then he proceeded to send out 2 more Pokemon. With just Mr. Mime left, I used Mimic, copied my enemy's Whirlpool move, and then won the battle. After that, I did Slash Warp Poke Center to go and heal up all of my Pokemon. I spent days 4 through 6 first looking for an ocean, and then looking for the perfect island to settle down. I did come across this creepy island with a Master Ball on it, and when I went to go loot it, I found some new boots. But they were a little too small for me, so they were probably for a Pokemon. After leaving that island, Araquanid stopped skimming on the water, so we started bouncing in and out of the water and it was more like riding a Gyarados. In my travels, I came across this beautiful base with a cool custom tree and an inspiring modern style build. As the sun began to set on day 6, I rode my Araquanid through a new ocean and found myself a perfect island to build on. It's definitely big enough for a lot of people to build on it, it has two cool little harbors, and is also mostly a flower biome. That night, I also caught an Abra and found the perfect place to claim to build my base on. I spent day 7 clearing the area of all the trees so I could build a pretty big base. I caught another Abra, and while I was doing that, I broke an Ultra Ball, but now I can show you how to craft all the different types of Pokeballs. On day 8, I ran into my very first trainer in the wild. I asked him if he lived nearby, and he said he was going wherever the wind took him. Then he got onto his Gyarados and sailed into the distance. While I was watching him, I saw a Chikorita. I caught it after a little while of battling, and that interaction with the other trainer and that little island the Chikorita was on gave me an idea. But first I went to heal up my Pokemon and then I used slash IV slot to see how good the Abras I caught were. The second one I caught was actually pretty good so I put it up on the global trading system using slash GTS ad. Then I went to the nearby Pokemart, bought some iron, made some shears, and RTP'd until I got to a jungle. I wanted to collect a little bit of resources for my very first build. These guys came by to beat a legendary boss and gave me its Mega Stone. Soon after that I ran out of wood, I did find some more coal while I was randomly teleporting around, and I found myself another jungle to collect some wood. When you're collecting resources, it's always good to replant what you cut down and not mess up the terrain too much in case other people want to build there. On day 10, I caught a level 48 Kingler, and I finished making my very first build, a warp platform. I decided to name the island that I claimed, Corinthalola Island. Now I just needed to get a warp set up so people could visit my island and build near me if they want to. On day 11, I dug a little hole into the side of my hill 
to make a little hidden storage room, and spent most of that day organizing all of my chests. That night, I planted my first apricorn seeds so I could grow some apricorns that I could use later to craft some pokeballs. Day 12 and 13, I battled fans and fought a shiny Arceus, and it sweeped my whole team. I also saw someone riding a Lucario, and then I tried to see if I could ride any of my Pokemon. Yeah, the only one I could ride is my Raquanid. I won a few battles, I lost a few battles, but another cool one was when I fought a Giratina in the desert. On day 14, I started capturing some more Pokemon and got my Litten to evolve into a Tauracat. I also caught a Crabrawler, another Alolan Pokemon I wanted on my team. Day 15, I found a free axe when I went to go heal up my Pokemon. I got some more Vote Keys and won an Experience Share, an Ultra Crate Key, four shiny new Pokemon, with one of them being a level 54 Kling Clang. Here's another little tip. Use Slash Kits to get some free Pokeballs. I spent the rest of day 15 cutting down the trees on the rest of this hill, and at night I caught a wild Squirtle. Then I replaced those trees with some jungle saplings. I spent day 16 hanging out with this fan, and I traded the Chikorita that I caught for his Rowlet. One more Alolan Pokemon to add to my final team. On day 17, I went searching for the next Pokemon to add to my team, a Mudbray. I RTP'd to this giant platform in the sky, and thought it'd be cool to jump off and teleport in midair. Luckily, I did survive, and it looked like I teleported to the ground, but I think that's a different platform. If you couldn't tell, one of my favorite things to do is catch starter Pokemon in the wild. I caught a Chikorita, a Squirtle, and then I found a Brakeson. After catching it, I defeated a level 58 boss Nummel. You can tell who the bosses are on the server because they're green, and bosses usually drop some pretty cool loot. That night, I caught a Gabite, which is another pretty rare Pokemon. While I was still searching for a Mudbray, I caught another Gabite, and it turns out there's only a 2% chance of Mudbray spawning under certain conditions. So I spent the rest of that day parkouring around the treetops in search for my next Pokemon, a Peaky Peck. While exploring through the dark forest, I also ran into the scientist. Just imagine if you were walking around the woods and came across this battle. And with just one Pokemon left, I defeated his Tyrantrum and thought victory was at hand when he sent out another one. I still won, but it was a very close battle. Day 19, I put the rare Pokemon that I caught up for sale on the global trading system. I knew that I really wanted a full Alolan team, so I put my Squirtle up for sale and it sold right away. I felt kind of like a bounty hunter, but not the evil kind. <laughs> Both shinies and starters do sell pretty quickly. On day 20, I went to the Pokemart and bought some bone meal, which I then used to speed up the process of growing some jungle trees. I wanted to make sure that I had plenty for all my builds. And that night, an admin set up my warp, <laughs> but accidentally broke my welcome sign while setting it up. And now everyone could teleport to my base using slash warp Corinthius. Once I fixed the sign, the sun began to rise over my island. I came out of my little hobbit hole, and I thought I had my very first visitor. <laughs> but as I got closer, I realized it was just an NPC. After just barely beating her in battle, I warped to the Eevee training area where you can improve different abilities of your Pokemon and battled some more Peko to get some redstone for crafting. And even though Litten evolved, he still had his fiery temper and I wasn't able to catch this Kadabra. The next day, I went to go buy some more ingredients and you can actually buy a lot of things from the Pokemart, including a lot of resource blocks from this guy and ores and minerals from this guy. The Pixelmon mod actually adds a lot of cool things to the game, including many craftable items like this anvil, which you can use to hammer the ingredients it adds to the game. You can also craft your own PC and Pokemon healer. Now I could heal up my Pokemon at my base and access all my Pokemon from my own PC. While looking in my PC, I realized that I actually had a shiny Aselgor, which sold right away on the global trading system, which I must add is one of the easiest ways to make money on the server. I went to go sell some more shinies and found out you can only sell up to five Pokemon at a time. Then I saw these two guys trading Pokemon because you could only evolve certain Pokemon by trading. And apparently you can ride a Machamp. On day 23, I bought a lot of sand and gravel and spent the next two days turning my dirt beach into a sandy resort. And while I was hard at work, a Venusaur boss spawned right by me and it turned out to be level 94. Once I lost terribly to it, I announced in the chat that there was a boss and someone teleported to me and defeated the Venusaur with his shiny Blaziken. It was a swift and epic battle. It was still missing a lot, but now my base was looking a lot more sandy and relaxing. I spent the next two days designing and adding palm trees along the beach edge and on my little warp island. I finished out the night of day 26 training with another NPC. Having money in Minecraft can save you so much time. Instead of having to spend my time mining, I just bought some diamonds from the Pokemart. I crafted up myself a pickaxe, made some concrete powder, and started to turn all that powder into concrete. The main colors I was going to build with was white, blue, light gray, and gray. You can vote for the server every 24 hours in real life. You can get up to 5 vote keys and 2,000 Pokecoins for just voting.
thing. Another good way to get a lot of money on the server is from winning it from the crates. I won 2,500 Pokecoins and an Ultra Key that got me four shiny Pokemon. I put this shiny Nickette up for sale and went back to making concrete. Soon after that, I actually had my very first visitor and pretty quickly we were in a heated battle. And it kind of looks like we had ourselves a commentator. The battle took almost the whole day and he managed to beat me. Then he went to go explore and fight some NPCs and I just went back to mining. By the end of day 29, I had a lot of concrete. On day 30, as I started building my base, one of my patrons came to visit me. She showed me her team and asked if I wanted to battle. To make things fair, you can go into the rules and make everyone's Pokemon level 100 just for the battle. Gamer really put up a good fight. She got some of my Pokemon to faint, but after a fierce battle, I finally beat her. She told me her base was nearby and if I found it, that I would get a cool prize. Since it had gotten dark, I grabbed a torch from my chest and began to search the island. She had her base all set up to be found whether she was on the server or not. And you can use slash trust to let your friends interact with your base. I looked under the carpet and found a secret passageway all the way down to bedrock. And when I got to the bottom, there was a sign saying to leave a sign saying that I was there. And even though she was standing right there with me, I decided to leave a sign anyway. Then she proceeded to give me one of every crate key that you can buy from the Pixelmon store on their website. It was so kind of her to do that. And I made sure to pay her back with some in-game currency. The next day, we went to go redeem all of my new keys to see what I would get. I won 30,000 Pokecoins, two stacks of rare candies, six shiny Pokemon, and another six shiny Pokemon. We ran to the Pokemon Center to see what Pokemon I got, and the coolest ones were Mantine, Stonejourner, which was really funny to ride, and this guy had an even larger Stonejourner. I also got a shiny Delphox, and a cute little Infernape, which after watching this cool battle, I traded with Gamer because she was so nice. When we went outside, I challenged Gamer to a race between my new Stonejourner and her new Infernape, which I won by a landslide. On day 32, it was officially time to make some progress on my base. While I was hard at work, a Lapras spawned right in my harbor. I quickly caught the Lapras and my Rowlet evolved into a Dartrix. Then I spent some time riding my new Lapras around and it gave me fond memories of playing the OG Pokemon games where no matter what Pokemon you rode in the water, it still looked like a Lapras. I spent the next two days turning this into this. I took some time to plan out my build and carve out some of the hill. And then I spent the next few days finishing the base of my build and carving out a lot more of the hill. You might be wondering what that random trap door is on the deck. It's just a Pokeball that you can find in the world that you can't move. But now if anyone wants to get the loot inside, they have to talk to me first. I ran out of resources by day 38, so I went back to the Pokemart to grab some more stuff. And while I was there, I got a bonus key that everyone receives once the server gets a certain amount of votes. And with it, I got a shiny Milotic. I wish I could have all these cool Pokemon live in the ocean right by my base. After getting some more concrete, I started planning out the first level of my base when this guy visited to buy something that I found while exploring. I really like when I'm playing on the server and I can help out other people and they can help me out as well. My base was really starting to come together. I constructed all the walls, windows, and doors for the first level as well as plotted out all of the rooms. Day 41, I went in search for more Lolan Pokemon, but I could not resist catching this cute little Pikachu. I battled plenty of wild Pokemon and fought a scientist who had a ditto, which meant two shiny Tora cats. The next morning, I RTP'd to one of the rarest biomes that you can find, a Mesa. I've never been to one before, so I was so excited to see what kind of Pokemon spawn there. After catching myself an Aeron, I claimed this little plot of land so I could teleport here whenever I wanted to. I rode Stonejourner around looking for a mud break because it turns out they actually spawn in this biome. I caught this cute little baby Onyx, and at night I was turning concrete powder into concrete because mud break only spawned during the day. I spent the next two days continuing the search and caught some more Pokemon, including a Nose Pass and a Rhyhorn. After quite a while of searching, I decided to ask in the chat if anyone would want to sell me a Mud Bray, because like I said before, there's only a 2% chance that a Mud Bray will spawn during the day. Luckily, someone had one for sale, and we use this really cool trading system, but I don't know the command for using this trading system, so maybe someone can let me know down in the comments. And then I finally had myself a Mud Bray. It was a pretty big one too. And on the night of day 44, as I was mining more concrete, my pickaxe broke. One thing you may not know about random teleporting is that it's random. And that means it could take a while to get to the right biome that you're trying to get to. So I spent all of day 45 teleporting around the world in search for a jungle. On day 46, I finally found a jungle and began parkouring around the trees in search for a picky peck, the last Alolan Pokemon that I wanted on my team. I probably should have been a little bit more careful parkouring around because if I died, I would respawn at my base and then have to try to find a jungle all over again. Luckily, I never died and I caught myself some more cool Pokemon. Picky pecks are pretty common Pokemon 
Pokemon, but for some reason it took me a little while to find, until I finally found one at the edge of the jungle. And supposedly they have a higher likelihood of spawning in the main jungle, but for some reason I could only find some at the edge of the jungle. I bridged out to catch it and threw more Pokeballs than I ever had before. Once I finally caught one, I decided to catch another one so that way I could have the stronger one on my team, and that's when a Trumbeak spawned, Pikipex Evolution. I spent a while trying to catch it, and when it finally went into a Pokeball, it broke free, and when I looked up, a Swanna had spawned right in my way. Let's just say I never caught it, and it flew off. Now that I completed my first goal of getting a full team of Alolan Pokemon, I began teleporting around looking for a Savannah biome, because there's a lot of strong Pokemon there to battle. I found this cool tower, and of course, the next warp that I get is a jungle biome. I did manage to catch a Grovile, another starter, but unfortunately, this Peaky Peck evaded capture. I also caught this Fomantis, another Alolan Pokemon, just in case I ever want it on my team. Day 51 was an important one. I got end crystals from the vote crate, along with some tokens and some other goodies. Now the end crystals don't blow up like in normal Minecraft, they're actually used to try to unlock a legendary bird Pokemon. Unfortunately this time I didn't reset the shrine, so I was going to need some more end crystals if I was going to complete my goal of catching a legendary bird. And of course the one I was going for was Moltres. I spent the rest of that day in the Mesa, training up to evolve my Pokemon because I remembered that there was a lot of strong Pokemon there as well. I managed to battle and catch a level 59 Laren, and I also managed to catch a level 43 Turtonator, which is one of my favorite Alolan Pokemon from the show. I don't think either of them like being in the rain, but I hope they're as happy as I was having them at my base. Even though Laren wasn't an Alolan Pokemon, a good tip is to always carry the highest level Pokemon that you own on you in case you run into any high level Pokemon in the wild. That way you'll still have a chance to win every battle. I spent the next few days training up my Pokemon in the Mesa, and I got my Peaky Peck to evolve into a Trumbeak. And although I wasn't really trying to evolve him, Laren evolved into an Aggron. And I think he was the biggest Pokemon I ever owned in Pixelmon. This made him really fun to ride around on. Day 56, I got some more end crystals and I actually reset the shrine. I honestly thought it was going to take a lot more end crystals. I definitely got pretty lucky. I never actually made it this far before with the shrine, so I didn't really know what to do. Luckily, an admin was on and he told me that I would need a full orb to spawn in Moltres. So I bought an orb and a Master Ball from the Universal Market using Slash UM. I got a Firestone from the Pokemart and crafted an orb of fiery souls. Now I thought I had everything that I needed, but that's when I learned that I needed to do one more crucial step. Defeat 375 Pokemon in battle. Comment below if you ever do this because it is a big accomplishment. I went back to the Mesa and instead of running around looking for the highest level Pokemon to battle, I started fighting every Pokemon in my path. I caught myself a Scraggy because they're awesome, got my Trumbeak to evolve into a Toucanon, and then I could finally fly on the server. I continued to level up my different Pokemon and let Aggron go on a rampage. I had an epic battle with another Turtonator, which would look really cool animated, and also spent some of my time exploring my island and battling the Pokemon there. And that's when I found a Team Aqua member all the way out in the Alola region. He had a Wailord, and wouldn't this also be an awesome battle to watch in the show? While exploring the island, I ran into my patron gamer again, and she wanted a rematch. While we were fighting, she sent out a Moltres, the exact Pokemon that I was trying to get right now. Turns out she got one just yesterday, and after she defeated me, she told me to go to the Eevee training to defeat Pokemon quickly. It was such a good idea. They're all low level, and there's a healing station right there. Why didn't I think of this? We both trained in the Morpeko room to get speedy Pokemon, and my Toro cat evolved into an Incineroar. <laughs> but I got in the way of the camera when it was evolving, so here's what he looks like now. Then I used slash Pokebuilder to change Dartrex's Pokeball type before training him. I really love the customizability Pixelmon Realms offers. Halfway to my goal, I put the orb in my hand to check to see how it was progressing, and it was a lot bigger than I expected. Dartrex was the next to evolve, and he turned into a Decidueye. And this time, I wasn't in the way. I started training Mudbray next, and he evolved after like one battle. This little guy turned into a huge Mudsdale. I noticed Gamer had a Machoke on her team, so we traded it back and forth to get her a Machamp. Then we went back to training, and she got her Charmeleon to evolve into a Charizard. While she celebrated that, I celebrated needing less than 50 Pokemon until I could battle Moltres. I also noticed at this point I had a full inventory of Redstone and Glowstone Dust. On day 64, I finally had a full orb and defeated 375 Pokemon. I put the orb into the shrine and it felt just like the movie. And now it was ready for the battle we've all been waiting for. Just kidding, I used the Master Ball right away. I was not about to risk that battle. I spent the rest of that day just flying around and it was kind of like a mini game. For some reason, you move a lot differently compared to the other flying Pokemon. 
on. And with my second goal complete, it was time to build. From day 65 to 68, I added a lot more decorations around my base. I added a few more trees to the harbor and a dock for any boats to drop off students. While this is a place to study Pokemon, it's also a place to come and relax. So I crafted all these different decorative items for people to enjoy the beach, along with this nice little drink stand to bring in some extra money to support the school. I feel like this would be a fun place to work at. It had a nice little fridge, a fan, and a sink, but sadly my Incineroar did not want to work there. I spent the next two days battling some fans. I scared this one fan that I recognized from my last video, and he joined fairly recently, so I managed to beat him in a battle. Then I went to spawn and let anyone else that wanted to battle me have their turn. I also got to meet this sweet Sogaleo, which was perfect for the Alolan theme of this video. Then I spent day 71 all the way to day 78 working on the second story of my build. <laughs> this took me a little longer than expected because there were a lot of awesome distractions. I caught an Alolan Ponita, a shiny Krabby, and there was an event on the server where special Pokemon like legendaries and different themed Pokemon spawn. And now that it's summertime, I caught an Alolan Raichu, which is honestly one of my favorite Pokemon from the Alola region. Sadly, that meant that I had to kick Crab Brawler off the team for good. Raichu was just too perfect not to have on my team. And if you thought that was a lot, a little bit after that streak of luck, an ultimate boss level 120 Sharpedo spawned. Many people flocked to my warp, but no one on the server could defeat him. Do you think you could? I also saw someone had built a little house or something across the sea, and it turned out to be a boating company with free rides to my island. And one last thing happened while I was building. The fan I scared earlier challenged me to a rematch, and this time he beat me. Okay, now here's a little tour of my progress. I wanted the second story to be in a little apartment for me to stay in as the professor, so I added my own little balcony, and since it was just me staying there, it wouldn't have to be a big place. I also covered up the ceiling with quartz to make it look just a little better, and so the lights wouldn't stick out as much. Of course, the second story needs a way to get up there, so I added some stairs to this nice little side room. Now I had a nice little apartment to decorate, and I also added a back door with an extra staircase behind my build, which led right back into the school. I used pretty much all my resources adding the second story, so I spent day 79 restocking my depleted concrete supply. On day 80, I heard the gyms were updated and I wanted to see it for myself, but before I could do that, I needed to train up my team just a little bit. I wanted to make sure that they were all the same level. I spent day 80 to day 84 training up my Pokemon in different biomes and explored the world looking for NPCs to fight. I eventually remembered that I won some rare candies that can be used to level up your Pokemon, and on the rainy night of day 84, I had a full team of level 40 Pokemon. On day 85, I went to go battle the gym, made sure to heal up beforehand, and I did manage to take out a couple of Brock's Pokemon. Also, this battle just shows how big my Mudsdale is. Slowly, each of my Pokemon fainted until I lost. I would definitely need a new strategy. Since there is a cooldown time between gym battles, I had to find something to occupy my time for the next few days. So I went back to building and I finally finished the outside of my Poke School Resort. I was going to have a school downstairs, an apartment for myself upstairs, and I added a nice little radio tower that could double as a lighthouse. On day 89, I looked through all my Pokemon for the best grass and water type because they're good against rock type. I thought I might have a chance because the updated gyms makes all your Pokemon level 100. I was actually able to defeat more of his Pokemon this time, but Brock's Rhyfear hits fast and hits hard. It was too much for my Pokemon to handle. With enough training and the right team, I'm sure you could beat Brock and take on all the other gyms. Let me know down below if you do. On day 90, I began working on my next build, and it's always so sad to see a diamond pickaxe break. But what did cheer me up was having a way to arrive to my island in style. I tried my best to match the style of the little boats that you see in Pokemon. I spent the day of day 92 hammering away, and that night I built this little Poke Center place to have in the lobby, but it was still a work in progress. I began day 93 in search for some clay to make some mugs and flower pots to add to my lobby. I spent the rest of day 93 and the next two days finishing up this lobby for all my fans, I mean students, to hang out in, along with a place for them to heal up their Pokemon. They could wait here while their Pokemon are healing up, or hang out with friends over here and enjoy some refreshments. I also spent these days turning this into an empty trophy room for my students to fill. Day 96, I got all the ingredients that you need to craft a camera and got a nice picture of my Incineroar. You can actually hang up these pictures by crafting a Pokemon painting, but to use this old timey camera, you need film. So I had to scour the world for sugarcane to make paper to make film. Then it was school picture day for my Pokemon and I got a nice picture of all of them. I spent day 97 building all of these desks and chairs for my students and hung up all the pictures of my team around the classroom. The school was all done, but now I needed a place to live.
live. So I spent day 98 and 99 decorating the upstairs. I added this nice little welcome mat and a coat rack, a modest modern living room where I could watch TV, a place to sit down and eat, and a really nice kitchen where I could cook and clean with a great view. Since most of my time is spent outdoors, I added just a small little bedroom with a full bathroom, shower, and all. I really love this nice open concept, and I have this nice open balcony all for myself. Another big benefit is that my commute to work is very short. And just in case you're wondering what's in the tower, I put just one sea lantern up there to hopefully guide any boats or Pokemon lost in a storm. I began day 100 exploring all of my builds. If you'd like, you can arrive on boat, cross over the dock, and get straight to relaxing on the beach. Don't forget to grab a refreshment from the stand. And for those who get seasick, you can just teleport straight to this platform. This school resort offers everything. I would love to go here or work here in real life. It has a full Poke Center, a big lobby to hang out in, and if you come back from exploring the rest of the island, you'll see this awesome trophy room. It just officially opened, and it looks like we already have ourselves a few students. Alright class, today, like every day, we are going to be learning about the wonderful world of Pokemon. And when the school day's over, I can head upstairs, sit back and watch some TV, grab myself a snack, and take a nap. If you want to have this much fun too, then you should join the Pixelmon Realm server. They have plenty of great features and events, as well as an awesome Pokemon community. And that's how I spent 100 days on an island in Pixelmon. Special thanks to Luke the Notable for starting the 100 days trend, to Pixelmon Realms for helping me make this video, to my patrons for your continued support, and of course to you for watching. Everything that you'll need to join the server is down in the description. And while you're down there, make sure to subscribe and follow me on all my other social media. Thanks again for watching.